states of matter. Here we're going to describe the different states of matter. Um, and we're using this simulation. Here's the URL for it. Look in the description of the video and you will find this link so that you can copy and paste it into your browser and play with it yourself because these simulations are super cool. Okay, let's get to it. So, this simulation allows me some, some control, right? I've got um, heat and cold, right? So if I choose heat, it makes a little fire, and you can see that my temperature here went up. If I choose cold, I'm putting ice on it, and you can see the temperature going down here, right? It also lets me control which substance I'm choosing. I've got neon, which is a small atomic gas. I've got argon, which is a slightly bigger atom, but also a noble gas. I've got oxygen, which is a diatomic molecule. And you can see the motion is uh, more complicated because now um, when the particles rotate, well, that's a whole different thing than when a sphere rotates. And I can also play with water. Okay, let's start simple. So I'm going to play with neon. And now notice we're at a temperature of 56 kelvins. And let's look at the particles. They are kind of far apart relative to their size. And um, they're moving constantly and they're bouncing off each other. They're colliding. Do you know what state this is? That's right. This is a gas. Okay, and it's at 56 kelvins. Very cold, but it's um, atomic, and so the attractive forces are weak. Okay, but if I cool it, as I cool it, the kinetic energy of the particles decreases. Notice they're still flying around, but they're flying around slower, and now they're wanting to stick together. And it's not that the attractive forces got any stronger. Rather, it's that um, the kinetic energy got weaker. So they just don't have enough energy to fly apart as much. Let's cool it a little more. Okay. So now we're in a different state, right? And notice that the particles are still changing positions with each other, but they're still they're now they're touching their neighbors for the most part, right? This is a liquid, right? And here's a solid. Okay, so let's go back to gas. So let's catalog what we see about the gas. For one thing, the particles are relatively far apart uh, versus their size. The particles collide with each other, but they instantly bounce off. This means that their kinetic energy is greater than their attractive force. Notice also that the particles travel all over the container. This means that gases will expand or compress to fit any size container. The majority of the gas is empty space. And since the gas is mostly empty space, the density is low. Now let's look at how the particles behave in a liquid and how that influences its properties. Look down here. Most of the particles are close together. Though they're moving fast still, they're doing more vibrating than exchanging positions. They still can exchange positions, so a liquid can fit any container, but essentially the particles are close together and touching their neighbors. Now what about the particles that are freeing themselves. That's evaporation, 
right? So these are particles that are up above. They're the ones that had enough kinetic energy to escape into the vapor phase. So if you look down here in the liquid portion, the particles are pretty much touching their neighbors. The particles in a liquid can still exchange position. This means that a liquid is still what we'd consider a fluid. As a fluid, it takes the shape of its container. However, the density is much, much higher than in a gas because most of the liquid is taken up by the gas molecules themselves. I'm sorry, the liquid molecules themselves. So unlike a gas, the particles in the liquid are touching their neighbors, which means the density is high. In fact, it's about a thousand times the density of a gas, so a thousand times denser. Just to give you an idea, air has a density of about one gram per liter. Water has a density of a thousand grams per liter. One more point to make about a liquid, and that is that since it's cooler than the same substance as a gas, that means its kinetic energy is lower, but now it's about equal to the strength of the attractive force. So the particles have freedom of movement, but they have to be touching each other. This is a compromise between a gas and a solid. Now let's look at a solid. So I'm going to touch the button for a solid, and I want you to pay attention to the temperature. Here we're at 86 kelvins, and um, if I change it to a solid, our temperature should go down to 43. OK, so let's look at the particles. There is less movement, right? The particles are very close. Um, and now notice they vibrate, but they do not exchange positions. Okay, what does that mean? That means that a solid is not a fluid. Liquids and gases are both fluids because the particles can exchange positions, and that means they'll take the shape and size of their container. Or a gas will take the size, a liquid will take the shape. But a solid, it's whatever size it is and whatever shape it is. So we have constant shape and volume. What else can we conclude? Well, now we can conclude that since we're at a much lower temperature, our kinetic energy has finally become less than the strength of the attractive force. The attractive force wins. What about density? Again, the density is high, but it's not much higher than the density of a liquid. Okay, It's not a thousand times greater than the density of a liquid. But the density of solids are at least a thousand times greater than the density of gases.